What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I hope you like this video. Listen, we are here for another retro review of The Real Housewives of New Jersey, Season 2, Episode 9. Now, look, y'all. Baby, these... <laughs> Woo, these next couple of episodes had me going, okay? For those who are new to me, I am watching The Real Housewives of New Jersey for the first time from the beginning. So a lot of this stuff is new to me. It might be old to you. But feel free to leave comments in the, the section. But please don't give me any spoilers, okay? Now, some of y'all told me when I was talking about Danielle and Teresa throwing that uh, last season with Teresa flipping that table, y'all were like, mm-mm. Wait till y'all see her. Wait till you see her chasing her around the brownstone. Now, at the time, I thought y'all was talking about a brownstone house. I didn't know y'all was talking about the brownstone. But well, neither here nor there, child. We are here. So this episode, it starts off with Carolyn filming a scene with two of her other sisters. I honestly feel like this scene was an audition. We know that in the last episode, um, um, Dina decided she was no longer going to film with the show. And I honestly feel like this was a... Let's see if one of the other sisters, can we can plug in one of my other sisters. Because the scene really wasn't about nothing. It was them talking about growing up and the big family and the roles and who was friends and who wasn't and all the different things they went through. And I mean, it was a cute little family scene, but I honestly do feel like it might have been an audition. I don't know. Then we have Jacqueline and Kim, the other Kim child, uh, the one that owns the boutique, uh, Posh. I keep calling it Porsche, but it's Posh and Teresa. And she's letting them know that she's having a fashion show and she wants them to come to the fashion show and she's inviting them to the fashion show. Now, listen, I get it that we're making a TV show. But Jacqueline and Teresa, y'all have to know that this woman is on some stuff. Like, she keeps playing that back and forth game between Danielle and y'all. And I like Danielle. I don't like Danielle. My boyfriend don't like Danielle. And so she is like, look, I'm, you know, Danielle is just crazy and... I, you know, I want to deal with her and I really want to hang out. I want y'all to be my friend. Basically, I want to be friends with you guys now. So I want you guys to come on down. Um, and of course they accept it, you know, and she says, I have to be honest though. Danielle is probably going to be there because I did invite Danielle. Um, and of course they were kind of like, look, you know, I'll go, you know, I can be in the same room as Danielle. I just don't want to have to deal with Danielle. Now, I found that to be interesting that Teresa was the one that was like, I could be in the same room with her. I just don't feel like I can, I need to deal with her. We'll get to that. So then, Danielle shows up to, to Posh with an attitude. She walks in the door. She's rude to the receptionist. She's like, where is Kim? And the receptionist was like, um, she's... I'll run in an errand. She'll be back in a few minutes. And Danielle is like, okay, fine. And she stomps out and she goes out and she's talking about how rude the receptionist is and the, rude, the receptionist put her finger up to her. Girl, she was on the phone. So then she's going to come back in there and was like, just tell her to call me when she gets back. Baby, the receptionist was like, okay, but I don't know who that is. And like, she walked out. Like, Danielle was like, she put her finger up to me and she was rude. So Kim shows up and the receptionist tells Kim what happened. And Kim apologizes to the receptionist like, girl, I'm sorry. Like, you know, I'm sorry she acted like that. So she calls Danielle and Danielle is talking about how rude the receptionist was and all of that. So Danielle ends up coming back up there and basically telling Kim that she doesn't appreciate the fact that Kim invited Jacqueline and Teresa to the fashion show. And how dare she? And why would she do that? You're my friend. That's not loyal. You're not loyal to me. I'm going to be honest. I understand where Danielle is coming from. Not from the point of view of trying to control who I spend time with and who my friends are, right? But, girl, we had a whole conversation at the beginning of this season where you were like, if somebody got a problem with you, they got a problem with me. And I got your back. And I'm your real friend. And I'm really here for you. And I'm one of the people that's really here for you. And I'm like, so you're really here for her? But you hanging out with the people she got a whole problem with that you see again, it would be different if, you know, she was like, look, I'm running this business. They're, they're, they're patrons, they're customers. They spend a lot of money in here and you know, I have to kind of ride the middle, but you know, I still support you, but that ain't what you did. You was like, yeah, Danielle, it's us against the world. It's me and you together. You made it seem like that, Kim. So you can't be mad now that Danielle expects that from you, Kim. So then we have another um, scene with Carolyn and her husband. Child, Carolyn is going through empty nest syndrome. 
and she is talking to her husband about him retiring because now the kids are gone and she got a lot of time on her hand. Baby, her husband was like, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen, my, my love. Like, we can still have our date night and we can still hang out, but baby, I'm going to still work. Like, I would be bored out of my mind if I didn't go to work every day. And Carolyn was like, okay, I get it, but, you know, I need something to do too. Carolyn, you need to go find you a hobby. Like, when my mama retired, my mama started bowling. And she be bowling in her little bowling league. And she go in her little bowling tournaments and stuff. And she had, she loves it. Her and my aunt do it together. You got to find you a hobby, Carolyn. So back down to Posh. Now, this is where I knew Kim was on that bull for real, for real. She going to ask Ashley, Jacqueline's daughter, to model in the fashion show. Jacqueline don't have, I mean, Ashley don't have no modeling experience whatsoever. You didn't call Danielle and ask Danielle if her daughter could model. Her daughter is did New York Fashion Week. And that's supposed to be your friend. Now, I can see if she called Danielle. Danielle was like, oh, no. She don't have time. Or she's under contract and there's only certain uh, events that she can do. Or you can't afford her price. Like, I can see if Danielle did all of that. But, girl, you didn't even call her. And how do we know you didn't call? Because that's the first thing Danielle said when she got to that event. And she looked out and was like, mm. Mm. Oh, I guess she didn't want it to be in a professional event. That's why she didn't call my, my daughter. So, of course, we have to see Danielle going through the whole rigmarole of how she doesn't want to go. She doesn't feel safe, but she's going to go. And her and Kim G, I mean, uh, yeah, Kim G are going to go. Or Kim S, one of them Kim's child. And how, you know, she is going to, um, you know, she's going she gonna, to she gonna thug it out. She's going to thug it out, even though she feels some kind of way about the situation, but she's going to thug it out, right? Um, now, the saddest person in this whole scenario is Carolyn. Because when Jacqueline and Teresa told Carolyn that they were going to this fashion show and Danielle was going to be there, Carolyn was like, listen, I just don't understand. Why do y'all keep putting yourself in a position to be around this woman? Y'all know she crazy. Y'all know she unhinged. Y'all know she looks for a reason. She looks for an excuse. She looks for a moment. Why y'all gonna go in there and act like why y'all even gonna put yourself around her, right? Why even do it? And honestly, this is how I feel. We're gonna get there, but this is how I felt about Teresa. But we'll get there in a second. So we're getting ready to go to the event, child. Now it's at the country club, and it's at the country club in Danielle's neighborhood. So she feels like. Hey, I'm on my home turf. I know these people, they know me. So, you know, let's make it, let's make it happen, Captain. Let's do what we got to do. Now, here's how I knew that Kim was on some BS. Because Kim put Jacqueline and Teresa at her table. She didn't give them like a table. She put them at her table. So again, if I'm Danielle... And I walk in there and you're my, you supposed to be my friend told me you're going to ride or die. That if people got beef with you, they got beef with me. And, and we thugging it out together. And I walk up in there and I see them sitting at your table. The guest, the person, the, 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 basically, basically that's like, if you go to, you know, a Versace, uh, 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 uh runway show, you sit next to Donatella. You know what I'm saying? Like, why would you do that? Because, again, what you're showing me is who you really feeling with, who you really rocking with. Now, of course, Danielle came in there on the BS. She came late, and then she sat at the table, like, pretending like she was on her phone, like she was so uninterested. But what ends up happening is Teresa ends up staring down Danielle, and Danielle ends up staring down Teresa and Jacqueline, and they're staring each other down from across the room, right? Now... Was Danielle passive-aggressive? She was. But Danielle didn't bother them women. She didn't get up. She didn't walk over there. She didn't say nothing. As they're outside, Teresa decides, I'm going to talk to her because I don't understand what her problem is. Girl, you do know what her problem is. She's had the, It's the same problem that y'all have had all season. Once again, you, Teresa, started this. You antagonized this situation because you went and you were like, so you're not going to say hi to me, Danielle? You're not going to say anything? And Danielle was like, hi. And then Teresa was like, something, 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 honey. And Danielle was like, don't call me honey. Now, Teresa wants to act like all I said was honey. I mean, that's a nice thing, right? Honey's nice, right? Girl, you said it, and you know you said it in a condescending way, and you know you said it with an attitude. So then Danielle was like, don't call me honey. Don't call me honey. Well, fine. Is bitch better? That's what I want to call you as a bitch. Is that better? Okay. Now we're off to the races, right? 
So, Teresa, you antagonized that situation, and you engaged with Danielle first. And, da and now, again, Danielle was being rude, and she was being very passive-aggressive in that moment, but she wasn't bothering y'all. She really wasn't. And I hate that I got to defend Danielle on this one, but, baby, I'm with Danielle on this on damn near this whole situation. So, they get to yelling back and forth, and Danielle made a comment about Teresa's house being in foreclosure. Now, listen. I don't know if Teresa's house was in foreclosure. Now, I know that Teresa still had that house years later and just ended up selling it last year. But I think what I heard somebody saying was they weren't talking about the house that Teresa lives in now. They were talking about the house that Teresa used to live in or a house that Teresa owned, maybe her and her husband. And that could have been true. Maybe they let that house go into foreclosure. I had a friend that did that. Um, they bought them, him and his wife bought a brand new house in a beautiful neighborhood. It was, an, I mean, they could afford it. And there was a situation with their old house where there was a homeowner situation and they, the homeowners wouldn't let them do certain renovations without going through a whole lot of, they had to jump through a whole lot of hoops to get stuff done. And they said, you know what? We have this issue and this issue and this issue and y'all making it hard for us. I tell you what, y'all can have the house. So they bought this nice new house that they could afford. And they let that house go. Like, listen, it is what it is. Like, we got a house now. If it mess up our credit, we'll deal with it on the back end. But we really tried to work with y'all to get what we needed to get fixed in this house. And y'all wouldn't y'all wouldn't do it. So, anyway, with that being said, child, with that being said, Teresa then proceeds to start chasing Danielle through that damn brownstone. Danielle broke her shoe. Danielle is like, get her away from me, get her away from me. You got security trying to hold Dan uh, Teresa back. Danielle runs outside. Now you got Ashley in it. Because Ashley was had her little two cents in it too. So now Ashley is in it. And Teresa is trying to get to Danielle. Danielle is outside hiding, crying. See, Danielle played up the moment. Now she's hysterical. Now she's crying. Now she's like, oh my God, I'm so scared. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. They're trying to kill me. Oh my gosh, they're trying to kill me. I told you. I told you they hated me. I told you they wanted to hurt me. I told you. I told you. See, you gave her what she wanted. You gave her what she was looking for, Teresa. And then Ashley is going to walk up behind that woman and yank her damn hair out her head. Now, they said it was just her weave. I don't give a good damn what it was. To Ashley assaulted that woman. And Ashley had absolutely no right and no reason to put her hands on that woman. Now, Ashley said later on, I thought she hit my mom. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You did it because that's what you wanted to do. You saw the opportunity and you took it. You ain't think that woman hit your mom because your mom wasn't even in the melee. I mean, she was there, but she wasn't there. She was nowhere. In the, Danielle was running away from y'all the whole time. How did you think Danielle hit your mama? When Danielle was literally running away the whole time. Now, again, she played it up. She called the police. Now, the police, this way I feel like the police was wrong because that was assault. That was assault. And... I'm not saying she should have been taken in handcuffs, but I don't feel like she should have been let, let, uh, she should, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the, what the protocol is, but they let everybody go home. And I'm with Danielle on that one. I feel like, well, I'm kind of covering, I'm kind of carrying it over to the next episode. So if we end this episode, I think after Danielle, after Ashley yanked Danielle's hair and Danielle was sitting in the car. So now Jacqueline is on damage control. Now she worried about what Danielle is going to do because now she know Ashley has literally put her hands on her. Anyway, that's where the episode ends, y'all. We'll pick it up. The next episode, it carries over the first 15, 20 minutes is more of the Country Club Brawl, and we'll get to it then. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.